we're going to do in microwave oven and it'll probably take us two videos to model it we'll do the, the basic stuff uh, this time and the next time we'll come back and add a little bit more detail so I'm keeping the default cube and I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to scale this in the X just like that all right so we are going to have the control R a little button panel over here with the time on there and I'm going to take another edge loop, slide it up to the top to uh, delineate. We're going to have a top bar there. And I'm going to bring another edge loop in here for the bar. So we need to separate it out like that. Okay, I'm going to press 3 for face selection and start selecting. I'm holding down shift the parts of the bar that go across the top. So I'll do that. I'm going to press P to separate by selection. And select that and press the slash key just to focus on that. Going to edit mode again, and I don't need this edge loop here, so I'm going to press 2 and shift alt and click that. X dissolve edges, we'll get rid of that. I'm going to join this up by selecting this edge and this edge, F to make a face, and then shift alt and click the bottom, F to make a face. Before I go any further, I'm going to bring all that back. I'm going to add a bevel modifier to this, so I'm going to do this, and I press 3 and uh, 0 0.015, let's try that. So I'll select this one and then this one and Control L to link and copy modifier. So we'll have a bevel on everything. All right, so we got the top bar, let's edge an H to hide that. Let's work on the door now. In three face selection, select this piece, hold Shift, select that piece, Shift and hold that piece or select that piece. P to break it out and then select it and slash key to focus on it. Now we need to rebuild this. I'm going to come up here to snap and turn on snap to edge. Go into edit mode and select this edge here. And then press E and pull in the Y and just hover over one of these edges and hold control. Now it'll snap it to there. That one's still selected, so shift and select that one. F to make a face. Deselect and then select all that. And F to make a face. Go back into object mode and slash and with that selected H to hide it. Now let's do the button panel part. Come in here and in face selection select that. We'll shift that, shift and that. P to separate by selection, selected and slash key. We need to rebuild this piece as well. So in edge selection number two, okay, this is one, two and three. So two or click there. Select that E to extrude, pull out and then Hold control as you hover over that. Select that that edge there, and then all these edges and make face slash. Okay, let's hide that now. Okay, so now we have the main box, but I don't need these edges on the box. So in number two edge selection, shift alt and click there and there. X dissolve edges, and then we're gonna close that up. So we have that slash key and alt H. There's, there are the main parts of this. Okay, so let's do the window in the door first. So let's select the door and come in and in face selection, select that face. We'll use that. We're going to do a Boolean. We're going to have to cut into this. So let's use this piece, Shift D to duplicate. Pull it out and P separate by selection. Go back into that. In fact, let's just focus on those two. So I select this one and this one. Slash key and look from the front. Select just this one. Go into edit mode and scale it down. And then just think about the size that you want. We're going to have to have a handle here. And that's probably okay right there. We'll start, we can start with that. I've just pressed 1 for vertex selection. We're going to round these off. Shift control B and pull and get a curve like that and then I'm going to roll my mouse up one two three so I have a total of five uh, vertices in there select that and press E to extrude and pull it all the way through the door like that then select it all and before we do I'll show you this if we go to face orientation see the way that's red if it's selected alt n recalculate outside so depending on the direction that you go in, you can have your polys flipped. Now I'm going to use this to cut through the door, but I'm going to turn off the bevel on this. I don't want the bevel on that. Okay, so I'm going to cut through now. I guess that's probably okay. So select the door. Now here is where we start to run into problems with our bevel. 
I've got the bevel modifier on there. I don't have smoothing on or anything, so you see, it'll still see the edges. But watch when I cut through. Select the main body. I'll just close that bevel up. Come to Boolean, drag it up, and on difference with the eyedropper, select this. And it changed a little bit, but not much, so that's okay. So we can continue. Let's apply, and let's delete that. And we have this. Okay, now I'm going to do some work on this. I think the way we'll do it is in edge selection, shift alt to click this edge. And you have to do it a couple of times all the way around. Okay, so I have, should have the whole thing. And I'm going to bevel this, but that may affect this. So I may have to apply the bevel modifier. So I'm going to come in here, control B, and hold shift and pull and roll back. To it so until I just have two. See the way that affects my bevel? So sometimes I apply the bevel modifier, but I think I think we'll leave it for now. So I've done that. And then I'm gonna do a little bit more. I want to tighten this up. So I'm gonna select the edges again. I'll do it on both sides. It may take two clicks for this outer one and then one click for that one. Okay, I'm going to zoom in again and control B and pull and I'm going to have two. I want one more. I just want to tighten that up. Now I will shade smooth this and then I'll come over here and I'll add weighted normal and normals auto smooth. And there's my door slash key. Okay, that door has to lead into an opening. So let's create the opening for that. Let's go back into this. And I still have this selected. And if you don't, just reselect it. So I can go Shift S, cursor to select it. Bring my 3D cursor right in the middle of this window. It makes it a little easier. I'm going to bring in a plane. Rotate X90. Go into wireframe. And I'm going to scale in the X bigger than the window. Scale in the Z. And I want to come in something like this relatively equal on both sides so I can make the inside let's try that let's bring it out and we're going to cut through the main body so I've got that piece let's shift and click that piece and then slash key to focus just on those take this piece and start extruding it in I'm going to look from the top and go into wireframe and I'm going to pull it back so that it's close to the back. It doesn't have to be the same thickness as this. We're never going to compare them. So I'm not going to worry about that. Go back into solid view. I want this rounded. So in two edge selection, I'm going to select this edge. Hold down shift for that edge, that edge, and that edge. And now I'm going to bevel those. That's just control B. Pull. That's three edges in there. Four, five. Just give it a nice rounding like that. Now this one is backwards as well so let's select it recalculate outside and turn that off again okay now this one we're going to have to watch our bevel again we're not going right through so this one might cause more trouble so let's uh, choose boolean pull it to the top and select this watch the bevel not bad actually so that's good so far and we can delete that and we have this hole let's shade smooth this and let's add that weighted normal and normals auto smooth again. Slash key to bring back that stuff. All right, so we now have our door. We have the inside there. I think I might like to make this a little narrower. So let's look at how we could do that. Let's look from the front and A to select it all and then go into edit mode for everything. Go into wireframe and then choose either one, two, or three. I'm going to do one for vertex. Box select, I press B, draw a rectangle around, and just pull this whole edge in a little bit and go back into object mode. So now it's a little narrower here. Okay, we're going to create a little indent for the buttons here. So let's just focus just on that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually apply that bevel. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to redo that. So that's sometimes what I'll have to do. Scale that down, bring it up, something like that, again, right? 
Now the bevel has been applied and I can't rely on it to, to round the edges, so I'm gonna round the edges myself. Shift, Control, B and pull. There's two, three, four, five. I want these pretty tight. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna extrude it back a little bit and recalculate outside. I'm gonna now push that in just a little bit. Select my main body. There's no bevel on it anymore, just Boolean and this. And hide that. Okay, now I've got this. I'm gonna come in, Shift Alt and click these edges like that. And I'm gonna bevel these edges but just with two, like that, like a chamfer. And I think that's probably okay because once I shade smooth, I'll have to put on these weighted normal and normal's auto smooth. And if that's not enough to fix any shading problems, I will often come in here and add a bevel once again, right up at the top and just leave it at one. And that looks just fine. Okay, and sometimes, by the way, some of this stuff is caused by the cavity shader. All right, so you wouldn't necessarily see that. And I can up this as well if I want. Okay, it, it up the, ups the polys, but this is an area that's got a little bit more, more detail on it anyhow. So, okay, I think to do this next part, I could grab this, I suppose. I'm going to do that inset for the clock. So I'll just copy that out. I'll go into edit mode. I'll go into wireframe and one because I don't want to just scale it. I, I, I kind of need to pull it because otherwise I'll change the, the curvature. If you start scaling this, you'll flatten the curve. So I select my points and I do this kind of a thing. Okay, now I'm gonna take it here. Let's pull it in a little bit. And here, pull it in a little bit. So I've maintained my curve, and then I may have to just move this, you know, myself until I like the position that it's in. You know, something like that. Let's extrude back a little bit. Let's get rid of the bevel. In fact, let's get rid of all of this stuff that's on it. Uh, what is that down here? I can even uh, go shade flat, just, you know, just for a piece that I'm going to use to punch a hole we calculate outside push that in just a little bit you can always look from the side and look in wireframe and see how far it's in all right that's, that's probably okay we'll see all right we're ready to go now select the main body i've got a bevel i've got all this stuff on it that's fine do boolean and bring it to the top and do that apply and delete that and I've got a nice little inset for where I can put a clock. Now, what I might have to do later, I might end up, you know, deleting that face and bringing in a plane in behind that I put the text on for the clock. We'll see. All right. Let's uh, let's select here. Bring the 3D cursor there. We're going to make a few buttons. Buttons or knobs or something. I'm going to use a circle and I'll go for, maybe I'll go for 20. All right, I'm gonna scale it down. I'm gonna rotate X90, pull it down, F to make a face. And let's bring it out, there it is. Scale it. Now these are gonna come down the side a little bit. I'm gonna have about five of them. So let's start by, let's extrude back, and then E and S come out. These are just gonna be real simple. E and come back like that and then delete that back face, X faces. Select this part, and I want to curve this to a nice rounded shape. Control B and pull. I'm gonna press C to clamp it, so if I hit here, it won't go anymore, and then roll my mouse up a bunch of times. I'm gonna shade smooth, and to improve that, I'm going to, in edge selection, shift alt and click this edge, and control B to bevel, and I just want three, and I'm gonna put one more edge loop and drag it down like this. So I'll have that. I'll take it, Alt and recalculate outside, and that should be just fine. I may on this do Control One, and I just did. And I think I'll leave it like that, so I have one subdivision on there. All right, let's take this and pull it in, something like this. 
and we'll try arraying that. I'm probably going to make it smaller, actually, now that I think about it. I'm just going to S to scale. Notice I'm scaling in edit mode, not object mode. So I don't have to worry about applying the scale afterwards. All right. So let's try that and see how it is. Let's use the array in the Z. So I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to pull to the left. Pull it down a little bit, and then put a zero in for the X. And hold Shift and pull it down a bit more, and then bring this count up to about five and I think I can probably get them a little closer and I can have one more down at the bottom we'll have some text out on the side here so let's go with that and then let's take take this and shift D to duplicate it pull it down again but get rid of the array so I just have one of them and I'll just take this and I'll just globally scale it that'll be more of a, a master button and I'll put that here I think I'm going to need to maybe reduce the size of these a little bit. I just, I just want them a little bit smaller. So a little bit smaller and then adjust how deep they are. And that, I think that's probably okay like that. Let's slash and bring everything back and have a look at this. Okay, I'd like to have a little plate down here, a little button down there, that a start button or something. Uh, and do it simply. So we can come in here and we can take this maybe and use that let's try that shift d pull it out and down p to break it out and the nice thing is that it's nice and centered although i don't want it that big go into edit mode but again i don't want to just scale it although it's not that bad maybe we could do it this time it just changes the curvature a bit but maybe i'll do it that way okay let's do that and then let's E to extrude, come back. And then let's E and S and come out a little bit. And when you do that, it doesn't always come out evenly. See the way it came out more in the X than the Z? So I'm going to SZ, pull it out like that. So they're kind of even. And then I, then I can globally scale it a little bit. Hold Shift, make it a bit smaller. Okay. E will come back a little bit. X faces. And that's probably going to be okay. It might be actually even be a little bit big. I'll just put that there. Well, yeah, it might be a bit big. All right, I'm going to take that and just I'll just globally scale it a little bit. And we'll push that into here. Now I need another button similar to that, or at least a label for down here so i may just take that and copy and, and copy it i'll go into edit mode though shift d and g and pull it over here and i guess i will go ahead and just scale it i guess for this it's not going to be too bad so i'll do that and then i'll pull it in like this and i could put sony or whatever on there all right so far so good hmm yeah, okay. So now we need a handle on this. So the way we'd like to do, do that is go to edge selection, select one of these edges, shift D to duplicate and pull it out, P to break it out. And now I've got this and I can use this. If I can select it, I'm gonna hide that, take this edge, let's pull it out a bit and bring back the door. Oh, I lost the door. Oh, there we go. Oh, get rid of that, by the way. There it is. There. Okay, look from the front. Go into edit mode on this thing. One, if you want to see the vertices. Just slide it over a bit. I'm going to press S to scale. That'll just lengthen it. There's nowhere else to go. I'm going to make it about halfway into the curve. E to extrude and pull it until I like the size. I'll select the whole thing and just center it a little bit. I'm going to go for about that size. Now what I'm going to do is Control R to drop an edge loop in there, and Control B, and I just want two edges, one going up, one going down. I'm going to pull it until I have about a, a square or maybe a rectangle, maybe something like that, up here and down there. Okay. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude out this way to get the thickness of my handle. I want it about that thick. And then in face selection, I'm going to select this face and this face. And I'm going to extrude again out in that direction. And then I'm going to delete those faces. Okay. Now, that's what I have. And that's okay. But let's just focus on that. 
that's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to hide the bevel for now because it's frustrating me. I'm going to press 1 for vertex selection. And I want to change the flow of these edges a bit by building some new edges. I'm going to select this vertex and this one and press J to join. And that'll actually cut through. So now it goes around here, around the top. And then I'm going to take this one and this one, J to join. So I have a, a, I've cut like through the neck of this thing now. I'm going to press 2 for edge selection and shift alt and click this one and this one. I want to get rid of those. Watch what happens. Okay, now I've changed this. It still comes straight, it comes down, but now I have this. And I can use that in a moment. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Or you could cut it and mirror it. J. J. And these ones. Let's get rid of those. All right. Now I can shift alt and click this edge. Shift alt and click this edge. And I can control B to bevel it. And I can do this. And put five in there like that and it's making it curved all right not quite done shift alt and click this edge this edge this edge and this edge and we'll bevel that and then it'll look nice control b pull and i do want probably five edges in there i want it to look like this all right let's slash key to bring it back but it's backwards so let's take this and let's rotate Z 180 degrees. So I built it in an orientation that was comfortable to me. And I'm going to pull it back in. I might do something at the base of that. This thing keeps appearing for some reason. Uh, I think I'm going to move this over there. So that's a very simple um, handle. I might pull it out and make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to go into wireframe and I'm going to box select these edges and these edges. And then I'm going to pull them into the door. So it sticks out a little bit more. We could try a shadow at this point. Now, you know what? I don't like it sticking out that much now that I think about it. And that's there. And that's basically the microwave. Now, what I was thinking about is, first of all, I feel like it's too deep. I could, I could be wrong. Maybe I won't mess with it yet. But what I'd like to do is maybe put some kind of a panel on the back, like you'd see on the back of a refrigerator or something, some electrical stuff. And if I do that, either putting some venting holes there or maybe having them on the side we could do a little dish inside uh we could do a light if we wanted but i th and and maybe something on on the base but i think we'll leave it at that for the time being and then we'll come back and finish some modeling maybe tweak some modeling and then we'll get into texturing all right so hope you followed all that take care and we'll see you next time